you're live. I'd like to call to order the March 10th, 22 meeting of the Harris County Board of Education. At this time, would you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> So at this time, we will go to item C, that the Harris County Board of Education review and approve the March 10th, 2022 monthly regular meeting agenda as presented. Do I have a motion? Ms. Oliver, second. Mr. Lipp, all in favor? Stand approved. That will take us to item D, that the Harris County Board of Education review and approve the attached meeting minutes from the board meetings held in February of 2022. I trust that you have all reviewed those and we have no corrections. Is everyone good on those? All right, do I have a motion to approve? Mr. Goodnum, second. Mr. Proctor, all in favor? We are approved. And that will take us to item E, that the Harris County Board of Education enjoy the school opening agenda presented by the Fine Arts Program in our schools. Um, so we have several proclamations that we're going to read in our action agenda. Um, so if you want to Wait till we get to those to do your presentations, that's fine. Or if you want to do them here, that you can do them here as well. If the art program is ready, we can we can do it right now. You guys ready? Oh, go ahead. Come on up. Yes, let's do that. Who's speaking for the art teachers? Y'all nominate somebody right quick. Let's Flip go. a coin. <laughs> oh, well, let's do that. So, Ashley, do you have the PowerPoint presentation? Okay.
<clears throat> Thank you all. That was a great presentation. Um, as you can see, all around the room, there's artwork from all of our very talented students. Um, of course, we can't display our musicians or our uh, thespians in the room, but uh, to all of our students and all of our teachers that, that teach the fine arts, we greatly appreciate what you do. There are a lot of school systems that sacrifice those programs for budgetary reasons. And this school system has always championed having the arts as a priority in our system and never considered cutting it. And Mr. Goodno, I know he loves to speak to that and I'll let him speak to that in just a second um, because it was the foresight of the groups that came before this group that Mr. Goodno has had the privilege to serve with some of those that kept this, this pro these programs going. And all I can say is thank you all for what you do. Thank you to all of our talented students, artists, musicians, thespians, all together. You all do a great job and thank you for what you do. I know you want to speak, go ahead. Well, you said everything that I usually <laughs> say, but um, Garnet's right. Um, a lot of y'all were probably not even around years back during previous financial problems and concerns and kind of what we're going through today. But the provision of the people on the board in the past were always wanted to have the art, music, theater. Um, that's why we can do STEAM other than STEM. And that's one of the things that helps us too. And that's one of our visions is to have a STEM certified district. And I, I, I have the vision that we'll get there and do that and be one of the, the first in the, in the state. But um, it was a, a budget decision, but I'm just proud that a lot of folks kept that decision. I think Mr. Cox was here during that time too. And um, but it, those members of the board and the others had foresight and to, I mean, we gave up other things to keep these programs and I'm glad we did. Agreed. Thank you. Mr. Chair, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Uh, we do have some students here and I just want to tell each and every one of you, I'm not sure which area uh, of fine arts you represent, but we are thankful that you chose to come be with us tonight and uh, we appreciate the contribution you make our, our school. I want to ask Ms. Longshore, and I, I may be asking something that it's not possible. If I am, I don't put you on the spot on me, but there's some beautiful artwork displayed up here. And it would be a shame for the people that are watching virtually not be able to see. It. Does that camera look, shift down? Can we show that? Do you mind scanning, spanning there? Is that okay, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Listen, I can't draw a stick guy and get him straight. So when I walk in and I see this every year, it is absolutely amazing to me that this is artwork from elementary, middle school, high school students. I assure you, you do not, you can't understand my art. I, I have that abstract gift. But um, <laughs> these are these are beautiful. And I, and I appreciate you giving me that liberty. I wanted to be sure that we show, show those to the folks watching online. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, sir. Mr. Couch, I, I do want to speak to what Mr. Goodno says because I, you know, I have been here a while. Some of you guys were in elementary school twenty years ago, um, but there was a time when the Board of Education, before this and even before that, I guess it was Diane Sandifer was the chair back in that time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there, this county was in two thousand five, two thousand six. We were growing. The high school was going 100, 120 kids a year. And then all of a sudden, uh, the economy faltered and we had austerity and all kinds of things. And I remember it being discussed and, and I don't want y'all to think it was deliberated for a long time, it wasn't. When it came up, when this board at that time came up with the discussion of who we're gonna cut, fine arts was never even questioned. And that was a radical decision because I mean, we were, it was really a major thing going on across the state of Georgia and across America for that matter. But the kinds of work produced by kids, the kinds of things that they did um, in drama and in music and all that kinds of stuff, we've all known um, 
how important that is. And it's almost like, you know, you know this, there, there's two hemispheres of the brain and what they do with fine arts and what they're able to do with fine arts is critical to total overall development. And, and everybody recognizes that and y'all do such an exceptional job. I do want to tell you too, change a little bit, you know, perception is always a big part of the fine arts. We haven't had a lot of humans in this room in a long time. Um, we've done a lot of video stuff. We've done a lot of virtual stuff, but th this is one of the biggest crowds we've had in a while. So that being said, <laughs> we're going to need you to do something that's really different for us, but it's a flashback to the old days. When he reads the proposition, your particular group needs to come up here, introduce yourself and let us see you. Okay. And I don't see well, cause I'm, you know, an old guy, but I can see close. I can't see far away. So uh, what's your first resolution? Uh, it will be uh, art when we get there. We, okay. That's in the action agenda. Okay. So we'll, we'll get there in just up. a few minutes. Thank you so much. All right, so that will take us to item F, uh, public participation. Mr. Pouch, did we have anyone from the public sign up to speak? We tonight? have not, I don't see anyone here that, that signed up or mentioned wanting to, no one signed in the back. Okay. All right, so that will take us to item G1, uh, property acquisition. And I believe uh, Dr. Finney is gonna come up and give us some information on that. <clears> hey, <throat> good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So as you know, I provided you with a um, real estate contract for the land trade and buy. And that's what it's called in the contract there for the um, property. Um, Saunders property, 200 acres behind Mulberry Creek and Creekside for the 75 acres um, over on the <coughs> the Board of Education owns. would trade that land and the Board of Education would pay another $150,000 um, to finalize that deal. So um, it's up to the board when you would like to um, uh, initiate this contract. And as we mentioned before, there's a 60 day due diligence period in there uh, by which both parties can examine the other land for any um, geotechnical problems, environmental problems, uh, surveying problems, um, those kind of things. And for any reason, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, in that 60 day due diligence, uh, you could walk away for, for any reason. Um, let me back up just a minute. I want to thank Mr. Marlowe for um, what he's done on this. This has really been his project. Um, and um, his vision and his means to really work behind the scenes to put these things together in a way that um, we feel would really benefit the district. Um, he and I talk quite a bit, so I want to make sure he gets the credit um, on this. Um, and he's really been indispensable in some of these projects um, that are coming about. So thank you, Mr. Marlowe. Um, feel free, Mr. Marlowe, if you hear me going astray, um, please bring me back on the, on the track. Um, so what I've got here, or, or what the board expressed to me, was their concern about um, initiating the contact, uh, contract now without any public um, input. So I talked to Amber Crawford, the attorney. She thought that was a fantastic idea and a very prudent idea. Um, so um, I have uh, talked to her. And she said that moving a closing date back, and that closing date on here is just a placeholder of June 1st. You can move the closing date back um, however far we, we would like to. Um, she also asked if we would like the other party to go ahead and receive this contract, and we said we didn't have a problem with that. So the other party has um, uh, this contract as well, so they can be reviewing it. So our big thing now is just getting the public, opinion, uh, public input on this. And what I'm giving you here is kind of just a start, a draft of a PowerPoint uh, um, that I've put together. And you'll notice it takes kind of the same, uh, same format as the public forums that we've done um, since we began doing the public forums with the, the middle school and a few after that. So this one would be uh, addressing the property and school facilities planning. And I don't think you can address this uh, particular um, land acquisition without going into some detail about the overall facilities plan that we have and the vision we have over the next 10, five, three, five, 10 years. Um, so 
just four quick pages here. Um, the second page is property and facility needs by which we can communicate, you know, the long-term vision of the district uh, to meet the challenges of growth in Harris County, how we're going to need property for another elementary school, probably uh, first before anything else. Not that this property would necessarily be used for a middle school, but that whole um, need fits together with our overall facilities puzzle that we're putting together in property. Um, but uh, we will probably within the next 10 years need property for another high school. Um, planning for growth along that 315 corridor, um, which is in, uh, in accordance with the Harris County Comprehensive Plan uh, for development. Um, letting people know that we have to make these acquisitions to secure property while it's available and while it's affordable um, in some of those potential areas. Um, that it might be centrally located according to the school district facilities plans. And then we can build this um, as we decide what we want to communicate with the, uh, the public as well. Um, on page three, we have basically a summary of the proposal. Um, Harris County Board of Education property, 75 acres um, on 208. Um, the Saunders property, 200 acres, what it appraised for. And then um, also point out down there on the last bullet that with what those properties are priced for, um, plus the um, plus the one hundred fifty thousand dollars that we would um, pay, we are still um, benefiting by one hundred twenty four thousand um, dollars on this um, on this land acquisition. To kind of back up to uh, page two, just uh, I think it was page two, or maybe no, it's up here on the under the Sun's property. We also want to communicate that this is not a developer, this is a land trust um, that we're doing this business with. So I think that's important for the community to understand as well. And then on page, um, did I cut one off? I think I cut one off. There should be a page with the Saunders property. It's here. You public. And then do you have one with the, mine's missing the 208. Yes. yes. Okay, so you guys have that in mind. So this shows them the, um, this shows them the uh, Q public boundaries for the property. So um, in that interest, it would be up to the board to determine when you want to initiate this contract. And we are prepared at this point to, um, at your direction to communicate with the public on this land acquisition. What we're recommending is y'all consider tabling this, give you a chance to look at it, give us a chance to do the community input meeting and be explaining to everybody. So next month at those board meetings, we move towards the question. Sure. Um, there again, back on this property on 208, um, I happened to be on the board when the school system acquired this. And there's been some questions to posed to me about why we're swapping it on since, you know, we are letting the public know. Back then at that time, we were informed that the growth of Fort Benning and with BRAC and that a lot of the studies from the state and stuff showed that um, that population density would be growing in that area. Well, unfortunately, all those calculations were not correct. And like say, we acquired land in anticipation of another elementary school in that area. But as you stated, the demographics and the growth in the county have changed dramatically since 2008, all along the 315 corridor. And that property, uh, that 200 acres is optimal. Like you said, 200 acres, we put high school. I mean, it's just, and that's gonna be where the areas grow, grow in that. And that, you know, will help us too if we have to get into redistricting or anything of that nature. So, but I, I just wanted to, since we're out live and online, to give some folks insight of how that kind of originated. Certainly, and I'll add that to these slides. And I would also like to add, um, I think you've got on your action agenda, the, the termination letter yes. for the joint yes. agreement with Harris County, which with the new Ellerslie Park, this, property that's on 28 that was originally going to be jointly used by the county and the board of education that is no longer in play um so i would make note of that as well 
for the public uh, in <clears throat> well i i too want to to uh agree with with what mr goodno is saying the the, the county uh their comprehensive plan uh does call for heavy growth on that 315 corridor and as we know um as we see every month there's another developer coming with another subdivision you know and even though we're not included in any of those those decisions uh we have to react to those decisions so this is trying to do the best that we can to secure property in that growth area for future use. Um, if we don't secure it now, then you know you could pay three times what the property is worth to try to get a track that size. Uh, it backs up to our current property um, where Creekside and Mulberry Creek Elementary sit. It's directly behind it, and as you see, the campus up here has developed with the with the uh, addition of the junior high and the high school being on the same campus, that works. Uh, a lot of school districts do that. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. And if we're, if down the road, we have the need for another high school, you're gonna have to have room for a football field, baseball, softball fields, tennis courts, everything that we have at this current facility, we would have to have at that other facility. We wouldn't be able to share that doesn't work. Um, so, you know, even though we all, you know, want to be one Harris County high school, you know, growth is what it is and we have to be prepared for it. And I thank you and Mr. Marlowe for the foresight of coming up with this plan. Um, and I, I encourage you to take it to the public, see what they think and uh, bring it back to us. Wouldn't it be possible with the way the contract's written, if we were to go ahead and sign it so that they can order the surveys and then we do our public um, forums in that 60 days, because the, the contract clearly says we can walk away at any point, but I know we do want to get the surveys ordered so those can get started, but they don't want to order the surveys till we sign the contract. And I get that because we don't want to waste money. But what are your thoughts on that? Well, the, sur the survey is done. The um What's not done yet, but we bid it and awarded it is the geotechnical and the environmental. Um, those can begin at any time, or we can wait until we sign the contract and then begin the um, begin that process during the 60 day due diligence. Um, I think I misspoke last week. Um, and when I said those were underway, um, we've awarded them <coughs> and we're ready to have them underway. So if you signed, if you went ahead and uh, initiated the contract, we could do that in the 60 day due diligence. Um, uh, so it's, it's whatever timeline you all prefer. And, and we could also do the, we could also do the, uh, the, the public hearings within that time too. Um, but it's, it's whatever Mr. Couch would recommend you guys decide. Well, yeah, we're gonna, as long as the, the soil testing and all that stuff occurs in the length of time that gives us an opportunity to say this doesn't work for us or it's more expensive than we got. Not that we're going to find one solid hunk of granite, but you, know, you never know. So, and, and that we'll get that information within the due diligence stage. We are going to table this. Aren't we? Yes. So I need a motion to table this until next month and we'll review it. Mr. Goodno, second. Mr. Proctor, all in favor? All right. Thank you, Dr. Feeney. Thank you very much. Thank you, Morgan Marlowe. Thank yes, thank you, Mr. Marlowe. All right, so that will take us to item H1, that the Harris County Board of Education review the approved, for approval, the attached list of equipment to be designated as surplus. I trust everyone's reviewed those. I think it was just one school bus. Um, do I have a motion to approve? All right, Ms. Oliver and Mr. Goodno seconded. All in favor? All right. So that will take us to item H2, that the Harris County Board of Education in recognition of the importance of breakfast in our schools, declare the week of March 7th through 11th, 2022 as National School Breakfast Week 
with the attached proclamation being, <clears throat> excuse me, being presented at the March 10th, 2022 regular monthly board meeting. So I have this proclamation here. Is Miss Baker here? She is. Can you come up, Miss Baker, please? Hello, good evening. So I will read our proclamation here. So whereas the school breakfast program has served our nation admirably since it was permanently established in 1975, and whereas the school breakfast program is dedicated to the health and well-being of our nation's children, and whereas the school breakfast program joins and has been joined through the years by many, <clears throat> excuse me, other excellent child nutrition programs, and whereas there is evidence of continued need for nutrition education and awareness of the value of school nutrition programs. Now, therefore, I, Garnet Ray of the Harris County Board of Education, do hereby proclaim the week of March 7th through 11th, 2022, as National School Breakfast Week. And I encourage all residents to become aware and concerned about their children's and their own nutritional habits in hope of achieving a more helpful citizenry for today and for the future. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the official seal of the Harris County Board of Education to be affixed to this proclamation done at the March 10th meeting, this, excuse me, of March, 2022. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, breakfast. All right, so that will take us to item H3, that the Harris County Board of Education in recognition of the importance of fine arts in our schools declares the month of March, 2022 as Harris County Fine Arts Month and shall through separate proclamations recognize art, music and theater in our schools at the March 10th, 2022 regular monthly board meeting. Art. Now you have to tell us who you are and where you are and I'm, answer questions. I'm Gina Fulcher and I teach at Harris County Carver Middle School. Hey, I'm Susan Banks. I'm at New Mountain Hill now. I was at Pine Ridge for 10 years and this is my first year. I'm at Harris County High School. All right. Let's see. Do y'all have any questions? You want to do those after? Why do you think our students are so good in art? team effort and they start from the youngest age and we just know how to help them grow through every stage of it. It's just supported in all levels with our community, with our teachers and our art team and you guys so just from all the support that we get. I don't think it's mainly because y'all all work together so well as a group in all schools. It's really good. Agreed. Thank you very much. All right. So I will read this proclamation. <clears throat> Whereas Art education contributes powerful education benefits to all elementary, middle, and secondary students, including the following. Art education develops students' creative problem-solving and critical thinking abilities. Art education teaches sensitivity to beauty, order, and other expressive qualities. Art education gives students a deeper understanding of multicultural values and beliefs. Art ed education reinforces and brings to life what students learn in other subjects and art education interrelates student learning in art production, art history, art criticism, and aesthetics. And whereas our national leaders have acknowledged the necessity of including art experiences in all students' education. Therefore, be it resolved that support should be given to art teachers as they attempt to strengthen art education in their schools and communities. And now therefore, I Garnet Ray, Chairman of the Harris County Board of Education, do hereby proclaim March 22 as Youth Art Month. Thank you so much. You do a great job. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. 
music. Good evening. Please introduce yourselves. Oh, hi. I'm Eric Carlson. I'm the assistant band director of the high school. Melissa Hammett, Elementary School. I'm Karen Winslow, I'm the second assistant band director at Eric Tiger School. Um, I am also a few of those things. <laughs> <laughs> and, and your name? Uh, Brandon Spring. Awesome. No, I, I just know that, that y'all work together really well, and I, I think the uh, both programs, the band, the instrumental music, and what happened to the choral program has been really good in the system. It will continue to be. And, and your leadership and how you work in that's really good. Please express for that and we appreciate what she does also. I actually have something to share from her. Oh, okay. Sure. Uh, she is currently this evening uh, still at work helping at Northside as a clinician for their large group performance evaluation free concert. It's basically tutoring for their version of the milestone. Uh, she uh, wanted me to share um, some things about the band program at the high school over the last few years. Oh, we didn't get to see you guys last year. Uh, she wanted um, you to know that over the past two years, uh, she uh, and the band program helped pioneer some COVID procedures uh, that were shared with other schools. And through our work with those COVID procedures, we had zero transmission cases through van and through van related events, even while we uh, hosted several events with students coming in from other organizations. Uh, she is, <laughs> our program at the high school is the only program in the district and in our GMA larger district that took two bands to our large group performance evaluation last year uh, and performed live, everyone else did it virtually. And in that live performance, they earned all superior ratings. Uh, in addition to that, uh, she is, <clears throat> uh, we have a record number of students currently participating in the collegiate level. We have 12 students participating uh, at, uh, uh, in college marching bands or in college marching programs. Currently, one of our former drum majors is the drum major at Georgia Tech. We have a former drum major who's the librarian of the Clemson band. Uh, so we have great big things going on past our program and those things come back to us with uh, experiences like having the Georgia Tech Marching Band come visit us at our competition that we hosted. Uh, we had 12 students make district honor band. Uh, two of them had the highest score, so they were first chair. And Hannah Tiemann uh, is a six time, six in a row since middle school, first chair winner for uh, wow. at district awesome. honor band. So she has swept it every time she has. Must be genetic. Must be. <laughs> <laughs> and then our latest Good news to share from the band program is that our current drum major, Sandra Russell, uh, is just uh, able to announce that he uh, has received a full ride of honors to Georgia Southern, including women for awesome. Thanks. Yeah, so Thanks for sharing that. And Hannah is going to be there as well. She just got accepted to the composition program. So thank you guys for having me. Good job. Thank you. All right. So please let me read this proclamation. <clears throat> Whereas the study of music is basic to the complete education, provides a competitive edge for successful educational reform, contributes to young people's development through <clears throat> heightened skills in listening, reading, self-expression, and creativity. Music education helps students acquire skills in production and performance of music, as well as an understanding of history and culture. And music and other arts significantly enhan enhance the morale and quality of the school environment, and it is stated objective of the public school to prepare children for a productive role in our society and name the National Association for Music Education has designated March as Music in Our Schools Month. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Harris County Board of Education endorses the observance of Music in Our Schools Month as an opportunity to support the purposes and practices of music, music education and encourages teachers, parents, students, and all citizens to participate. Now, therefore, I, Garnet Ray, Chairman of the Harris County Board of Education, 
do hereby proclaim March 2022 as Music in Our Schools Month. Everybody got to come <laughs> press the play. Do. There you go. Thank you very much. Yes, Thank you very much. Pam. Yes, please. Mr. Boykin, before you leave, I just wanted to say that um, you do an incredible job with our students. And I'll tell you that I had a um, just a member of my family shall, shall go unnamed, uh, but she was in your class and you introduced her to the fact, she's very, very good at math, and you introduced her to the fact that it was music and math go hand in hand, and you opened up, she, there she was disgruntled, oh, I've got to take this music class, and you changed the game for her, and she loves it, and now she's singing in a praise band at River of Life, and doing great things, and I just, I thank you, as a, as a mom, thank you so much. All right, theater. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Sarah Slappy. I'm the drama teacher at uh, Harris County Harbor Middle School. Hi, I'm Mallory Longshore Sargent. I teach theater at the high school. And not to correct you, Mr. Ray, but I can put the thespians on display. So here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I have four of them here, and one of them in the booth. I'm Logan McKean. I'm the 11th and 12th grade representative of our theater troupe. Hi, I'm Taylor Rickland. Uh, I'm the president of our Thespian troupe. Um, I'm Antigone Gladwin. I'm only a member. <laughs> <laughs> only a member. <laughs> um, I'm Judy Marie Gaps. I am the community service officer. And Chase Miller in the back is also a Thespian. Um, so we love our parents on a daily basis, um, but we usually take the time on Mother's Day and Father's Day to really post the picture. It's not official unless you post the picture on Facebook and things like that, that you really do love your parents. Um, this is kind of that moment. Um, fortunately, my parents are still like, very fortunately, they're still with me, but friends of mine always talk about when your parents aren't there. Well, we've kind of been given that the past two years that theater, hasn't really been here the way that we're used to. And it's it's really, really nice that it's getting back into full force. And uh, myself, Ms. Slappy, Ms. JV, Ms. John and Vincent at Creekside are really working to make things seamless throughout uh, the county. Um, I have things for you. <clears throat> So um, on the front side of it, it is, well, there's a sticker. So you can put those on your laptop so that, you know, we can see. Right. It is a sticker, I love stickers. Um, so uh, on the front side, it's, it's some reasons that, um, that we do drama. Certainly not gonna read anything out, but, um, or at least all of them, but just some big points. Um, drama specifically does help with mental health and mental health awareness. Um, it encourages uh, consistent attendance. Um, I, I love it when a love and hate when a student says, Ms. Longshore, I would skip every day if it wasn't for your class. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, it encourages empathy. Uh, we need a lot more of that these days. Um, helps with resilience to stress. That's why we're not stressful at all, stress at all. Um, reduces problem, uh, problem behavior, um, improves, um, increases student engagement, and lastly, it, it improves academic performance. Again, you can see more of the beneficial reasons. So on the academic performance, um, it's no secret that I'm taking some classes right now. And so this actually started as a, an assignment. And I was like, well, let me just present some of my findings. Um, basically, that you can see over the past three years that the majority of our honor grads and honor grads with distinction um, are fine arts students. Uh, you can see that it's broken down on there between theater, art, uh, um, music, uh, bands, and chorus, and just some findings. If it's a little too small, because I know that some people can't see it small, there's a QR code, so it's a live link if you wanted to see some more of that. Um, it just reiterates kind of what we were talking about at the beginning of the meeting, that it really 
theater, but fine art specifically, creates the whole person. Um, and so that's just a little bit of findings. I know you guys like data, so there you go. Um, there has been no national survey of theater in over 10 years. I honestly predict that that'll change after this pandemic. I think that they're gonna want to know some data. Um, specifically because we have lost, specific students especially, have lost their ability to communicate. Um, being in front of that screen for a year and a half, two years, however long it was for each student, they have forgotten how to communicate, how to advocate for themselves, how to be empathetic, how to problem solve, how to disagree. Sure. Um, and so it's really, I think you're gonna see where these programs specifically are gonna get national attention even more so than they already do. Um, oftentimes in history, you see a renaissance happen after a big major event. And that seems to be on its way. I thank you so much for being at the forefront of that renaissance and always supporting us and everything that we do. Um, and again, just thank you for everything. So, okay, great. <laughs> Ms. Longshore, I would, I would say not only is our students that have forgotten how to communicate, I think, uh, unfortunately, our culture has forgotten how to communicate. So hopefully uh, our students that are in, uh, in theater can, can help reassociate this entire culture. I hope so. Perhaps let me read this proclamation for you. Whereas theater is in all art, is an, is an important part of the experience Drama and theater invite young people to view an expand, view an expanded world of ideas. And theater has the ability to demonstrate valuable lessons about universal concepts such as love, honor, prejudice, or loneliness. And teachers can offer classroom variety through the use of created drama and role playing. And children can gain confidence and improve their learning through drama and theater experience. And whereas theater is a vital part of the cultural life of any community, be it resolved by the Harris County Board of Education that March is recognized as Theater in Our Schools Month in the Harris County School District. Now, therefore, I, Garnet Ray, Chairman of the Harris County Board of Education, do hereby proclaim March 2022 as Theater in Our Schools Month. Thank you so much. And before you leave, please step up. Mr. McKean. Mr. McKean. And I do believe the gentleman in the back Chase. is Chase is getting recognized too, is he not? Academically. Academically? Race. Who is not here Oh, okay. Oh, so sorry. He's in the back, but he's not there. Okay. My apologies. I thought he was here. To further enforce. What Miss Longshore stated, this young man right here is our valedictorian this year. So I would just like to recognize you and give you a round of applause. Congratulations. I, I've known this young man since he was this tall. So I'm very proud. Congratulations to and you Chase, all. Chase, who's not here, was the and, star student. Yes. Chase is the star student. He's actually at Georgia Tech. And I know I'm going to butcher it, but it's kind of like a survivor competition. So you have to be invited to go. So he works with teams and he'll do some individual competitions. If he wins, and there's a very good chance, it's three days, um, he will get a full ride to Georgia Tech. Oh my God. Is this so, robotics? Is that what, it, what does he do? Um, it's, um, it's very all inclusive. Um, there are different, he was explaining it to me. He's know, super geeky, I'm sure. Yes, the theater person I'm with. Uh, and, I, and I can say that my daughter graduated from that. Yes, so um, we should know in about three days. I think that's fantastic. Thank awesome. you, Val. That's good. good Thank, you you Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of our, our, our folks that were honored tonight. You can be excused now if you'd like, or you can stay to the end of the meeting. It's all your choice, but we'll give run you this opportunity it. to run if you want to. Those are really smart kids. Very much. That kid that's in that tech conversation. I've had, I've had some good conversations with the department. <laughs>
I find it bad on Betty's goal. It's it's unfortunate. And he's, he's really good with people. I mean, he's not just – he's really good. He's conversive. He knows what's going on. That's a great job. All right. So, we'll move on at this time. So, that will take us to item H4, that the Harris County Board of Education review the proposed new policy, BH1, board norms and protocols that is now required by the Georgia School Board Association in order to continue eligibility for the annual board recognition level of exemplary status. Uh, we did table this for the month as we were to do. Uh, we can take action on that tonight. So do I have a motion to approve that? Now are there, and, no, and no. one of the things we need to know is if you have comments or things like that before you vote to do it, yeah, you may I'd, still I'd ask. Like to, I'd like to ask. Oh, wait, 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 that's correct. We did we not, we just got that last week. That's correct. Yeah. We will not take action on that tonight. So we, is there any, does anyone have any additions or anything changes that they'd like to make to that draft not yet but i'm going to yeah can we do it this way if you'd send it to ashley we'll put them in there and then y'all can all look at it and the, the, spread it out make sure y'all all get yes. it you'll know next month what you want okay yeah i'm, I'm told gone in there yeah you get 30 days in the thing and i encourage you to do that because there are some things in there that we don't do And I also will be looking over it again with Ashley's help. Does anyone have any other discussion on that? All right, so that will take us to item H5, uh, that the Harris County Board of Education review the attached proposed intergovernmental intergovernmental use agreement termination contract between the Harris County Board of Commissioners and the Harris County School District regarding the Waverly Hall School property on 208. That was in your packet last week. Um, I do not think I need to read that resolution. Everybody should have already read through that. The county has done their part, signed it, notarized it. Uh, everything's done on their side. Uh, all we need to do is approve it and then we can sign it and, and pass it along to the attorney tonight. So do I have a motion? Mr. Goodno, second. Dr. Sparks, all in favor? All right. That will take us to item six that the Harris County Board of Education review for approval the decision to move the upcoming Board of Education school visit to New Mountain Hill Elementary from Wednesday, April 20th, 2022 to Wednesday, April 27th, 2022 in order for the board being granted the opportunity to attend the ribbon cutting ceremony of the new Mercer Medical Clinic in Hamilton. As you know, these are posted meetings and um, we need to make sure that we are forthcoming with any changes. So that's what this change is, is uh, regarding. So do I have a motion to make that change? Mr. Lip, seconded Mr. Green, all in favor? Okay, make sure you note that on your calendars as well uh, to change that. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, that will take us to item I-1, that the Harris County Board of Education review the attached enrollment report for February, 2022. That was in your packet last week. I trust that everyone has reviewed it and I will entertain a motion that we approve that. Dr. Spark, second. Mr. Proctor, all in favor? All right. <clears throat> and that will take us to item I-2, that the Harris County Board of Education review the attached major purchases report for February, 2022. I do not believe that was in our packet last week, was it not? <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Does anyone have any discussion on that after reviewing it? Sure, I do have a couple of questions. Sure. Um, I noticed there's a, a, an issue here for Fletcher Oil for diesel. Uh, we have already kind of talked a little bit about <clears throat> what a precious commodity that is, <laughs> is and going to become. Uh, so I'm not sure, uh, Dr. Penny or Mr. Dallas, or whomever has the answer. Was that prior to the <clears throat> The sudden surge where oil turned into gold. So that's what the okay, there is. Next time it will be much greater. Is that what you're wanting? Thank you. The other question I had was um, <clears throat> regarding an open purchase at the bottom, I guess, the CTA equipment, Connect Grant. Uh, there's several items for equipment, and I didn't do the math. So I ain't that good in my head, but 
it added up pretty quick. Is that relevant to Mr. Couch, the, um, the technology center? What is that CT, what are, what are the CTA expenses, I guess? Uh, it's all kinds of upgrades to the grant that uh, Mr. Steele and uh, Mr. Hamilton <coughs> received earlier. Okay. You remember, it's just yes. not been spent yet. Okay. So it's for those programs. And some of those may eventually affect what we do over here, especially in the welding area. But this is not directly related to that. No. Topic. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you, sir. Anyone else have any questions? All right, I will entertain a motion that we <coughs> approve the major purchases report. Mr. Proctor, second. Dr. Sparks, all in favor? All right. That will take us to item I-3, that the Harris County Board of Education review the attached financial report for February, 2022. <laughs> Any questions? Notice the splos is down. We hope that that's you know post Christmas, post January. Uh, right. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> well, also, COVID restrictions have relaxed, and you know, it's it, life's kind of getting back to a little bit of normalcy, hopefully, and. Maybe people are, aren't spending their money in Harris County as much as they were before or ordering through online sources and things like that. They're actually going out to the stores. Miss Seha has assured me it's going to go up. I hope she's right. We got that on the tape. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you for that clarity. Miss Seha is keeping an eye on it. I, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. <laughs> I do have another question for you, Mr. Bell. Uh, so the year to date, uh, fund equity balance is, is is fantastic. Although I know we have plans, you know, for that, right? To to expend some of that and uh, and and justifiably. But is this balance where you anticipated it would be at this point in our year? Are we on track to be able to use the funds from the general fund that we wanted for the some of the projects that we're approaching? Are we ahead behind? How do you, how do you, how do you I think we're on track based on what we anticipate the cost being. Um, that it's part of the fund equity that we intend on spending. That's right. We'll know better when we get a bid on how much it now costs. Thank you. But we are, we hope that we're heading in that general direction. Um, and we'll see how things go. We are still in good shape because we have. Um, we're above what's recommended. The state says we hold back. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. And then it started raining. <laughs> A lot. All right. So that will take us to item I-4, that the Harris County Board of Education review the attached school nutrition report for February of 2022. Oh, excuse me. You are correct. Thank you, Mr. Brock. We, we can. We can go back and approve. Okay, that's what we'll do. So we'll go through these and then we'll we'll approve items three, four, and five at the same time. <coughs> Thank you for thinking on your feet, whoever said that. Uh, so we will review the nutrition report. Again, it's a good fund balance. It is, and there's, well, some of the schools have a significant increase in their lunch participation. Any ideas to what prompted that? I, I, I can maybe shed some light on that, and Ms. Baker might be able to uh, attribute some of that at Harris County High School to a new lunchroom manager, am I correct? Um, she is, is making some headway over there, from what I understand and talking with some of the faculty and students um, and, you know, ask, actually engaging the students and asking them, you know, hey, what do you like? What do you not like? What can we fix? You know, and all of that. And I'm sure I, I hear Miss Oliver echoing down here. I'll turn it over to her because. Well, I was just I was just going to say for a child who never 
ever eats in the lunchroom is now doing so. So uh, she goes, yeah, it's not so bad. And I was like, wow, that's the best compliment. Please, uh, please tell the high school people we're really impressed. Well, Miss Baker, I'm not, I mean, I'm, look, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. I can promise you that. But I mean, I can do quick numbers, and it looks like every percentage on everything that we do has gone up, if I'm not mistaken. Not just the high school. No, you are correct. Every one of them. <clears throat> Maybe the food's better. Food is better. Managers are good. We've made some changes in our management particularly from Creekside Middle School, High School. Um, we've shifted some people around. Uh, food is better. I like to say it on record, but food is better. <laughs> and um, students are eating, but a lot of our um, contributions to what these numbers are would relate to our having those grab and go, especially for breakfast, mm. because what we started doing is taking the breakfast to them, to the students versus them coming to us. So I know the middle school has several different points where they go to the front of the school, to the back of the school, to the bus lane. High school does the same thing. So that's a lot of um, attributes to what we're doing. Thank you. Well, go ahead, Mr. Proctor. Is there any more been put out about is, there, is the free uh, lunch going to continue or do we know? Right now, we have an ending date of June 30th, 2022. And so go ahead. I was just saying, and too, they make it so attractive. Like when you walk into the high school, it's on that really cool cart and it makes it fun and festive. It's kind of like a little gathering spot and they grab there. Everybody grabs it. And... I think also it's kind of like in the classroom. If the teacher's engaging <clears throat> and the teacher's excited, then the students are. And so we, our managers are engaging and they're excited and they are going out and they're interacting with the students and with the staff as well. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask the question with the the climate of the world being what it is today, and I, I know commodities are going to be hit hard. Uh, I'm hearing, you know, that that prices of normal things are going to go up. Do we anticipate having that? I know we have contracts and FDA contracts and things like that, but as fuel costs go up, it costs more to deliver. It costs more to process it. You know, those things. Are we seeing that? those rise okay we are if you think back to a couple of meetings probably back in i want to say september november october when you saw a great increase <clears throat> and we wonder why it was such food prices have gone up purchasing supplies has gone up and of course the um, transportation to get us those supplies has also gone up well I, I appreciate your leadership. Yes. yes and as long as that no, that end number stays in the on the positive side, we're good. Well, we'll keep it positive. I know you That's will. That's your high positive, be positive. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so that will take us to item I-5, the Harris County Board of Education review the attached CARES financial report for February of 2022. Uh, as you may remember, Mr. Couch, um, in some discussion with um, Ms. Sehan, Ms. Chandler felt that we needed to start publishing this as part of our uh, review every month uh, because the, you know we want to be able to, to, to show where all of our CARES funding is going. So if anyone has any questions, they can see the report and, and see exactly what we did with it. Um, so uh, you can review that. Does anyone have any questions? Of Ms. Champion, yes, Mr. Campbell. I would like to make a statement in addition to what you just said. Um, a, a big part of it is we want to use this as uh, one way to communicate with the public because th they can look online and they can see this. And if they attend here, they can see that the focus of this school system has been really working with direct instruction and direct effects on cleanliness and sanitation and all those kinds of things to keep our kids in a safe environment while also working uh, key focus on learning loss and, and really dramatically improved achievement to make up for the time that we lost school and kids weren't able to go. And, and I think we've done an excellent job of that, especially with the leadership of Ms. Chandler. Yes. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, sir. Ms. Sahar, Ms. Chandler, can one of you remind me on the 
the very bottom line where it says reserve to be used in future years, what is the time frame to have that money spent? Twenty twenty four. We left that in reserve to make sure that for the next year, twenty twenty three, and school year twenty twenty four, that we're able to address unforeseen things that we might not know about right now to mitigate. But are the the future salaries of our learning loss teachers and all of those are built into that too? Correct. The next year's uh, budget for those positions is already budgeted. You see that in the. In the Great instruction. We've already budgeted for 2022 and 2023. So this is strictly we're holding back to see what addition they might be needed. Okay. Yeah. I think that's very prudent. Thanks. Uh, Thank you, ma'am. James leadership. It is. <coughs> All right. So I will entertain a motion that we take I three, the financial report, four, the school nutrition report and five, the CARES report and a motion to approve. Ms. Oliver, second, Mr. Sir? No. Oh, Mr. Proctor, all in favor? All right. So that will take us to item J, that the Harris County Board of Education share comments, news and information they might have with the public and other members of the board. And this evening I will start with Mr. Proctor. All right. Mr. Green? Um, all right, Mr. Lip. Yes, thank you. I just want to say again uh, how much we appreciate the students and staff that came to, uh, to be with us tonight and to let us celebrate them and arts in our school. And um, we are looking forward to our our visit next week to um, to the new middle school. So excited about that, Mr. Goodman. Um, speaking of the CARES money, um, I'm glad that we took ours and put it to use on a system that stayed open. Uh, I have some concerns of systems that got CARES money and they weren't open <laughs> to educate students. So at least we do have something to show and that all our teachers and staff were dedicated through these last two years. I, that's just been the, every time I think about it and stuff that we've been through, it's just been phenomenal of, of what the staff and everyone here in Harris County has done. And I'm in this board, it's always extremely thankful for that. Ms. Oliver. Um, I just wanted to say, um, I always love it when it's art month, it's just super, super special to me personally, but um, congratulations on your literary win uh, to win region. It's a very difficult thing. Um, I competed every year and then to look up on that board and to see your school name and to see the one beside it. It's a very exciting moment. So congratulations, it's very exciting. And I uh, just wanted to say thank you um, for letting me be a part of the chamber dinner this past weekend. It was wonderful to see the uh, many people who were honored. It was so great to, to get out and, and be together. Um, at the chamber dinner, so thank you, uh, Ms. Baker, for uh, allowing me, who she serves on the board of the chamber, so thank you for letting me be a part of your table. It was a fantastic night, and um, so it's National School Social Work Week, and I mm -hmm. see all the emails that you guys are sending out promoting all that you're doing. You do all this stuff all the time. It's just now that, you know, um, the week... Um, lends itself to have more of a spotlight. So we're grateful. Thank you for all you're doing to change the lives of, of Harris County families. And then um, just wanted to let you all know on Instagram, you can follow the um, all the fine arts groups. And I follow the, um, the theater as well as uh, Miss Longshore Sargent. She's funny. Anyway, um, uh, you can follow them and they're spotlighting the children in the programs like right now and they're doing little blurb testimonials as well as putting pictures of these students up there like in their costumes and things like that and the answers are very honest gen z students are very very honest and so they're they're um, really sharing their hearts with you about what the program actually means to them so these numbers are great i love this but to see the story behind the numbers 
and to see how you're changing lives to go on and do betterment. Yes, for college or yes, whatever's next. So um, thank you all for what you do. It matters. And um, that, that's all. Dr. Parks. Thank you. Ditto to everything that has been said as far as the fine arts are concerned. Congratulations to all those students for those wins. Congratulations and happy school social work week to Ms. Brundage and her staff at the Hope Center. Um, I had an opportunity to attend the Harris County Carver Middle School Girls Basketball Championship Friday in Muscogee County. And um, while that game did not go the way we wanted it to go, I'm hoping that we can come to some type of resolution for our middle school athletics. But on a more positive note, and seeing a one beside your name, I hope this will be okay. But my alma mater, the William Henry Spencer High School oh. varsity boys are state champions for 4A. Oh. Go Greenwood. <laughs> Good for them. Good for them. No. <laughs> Mr. Ellington. Yes, sir. Mr. Cash. <clears throat> uh, I got a couple of things. One, I had the opportunity to go see a race of the administrators at Park, and we presented them with a, a check for uh, the playground. And I knew I was going to do one in New Mountain Hill, and I was planning on doing some others and announcing that. But you guys got contact from all kinds of people about where's our check? Where's our check? Everybody gets a check. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> and and I think all the principals know that except Miss Allen. Miss Allen, you're going to get a ten thousand dollar playground check and your ASCP money. It's coming. <clears throat> Megan worked it out. Thank you all. Now another thing that's very important: your little box for board appreciation. And we appreciated you too, Mr. Ellington. You had to share yours, up. but yeah, with me. But. Um, <laughs> We do appreciate what you do as a board. Uh, you have been through uh, something that none of us signed up for, but yet as a group, y'all worked together extremely well over these last two years. It's been unbelievable the kinds of things that y'all had to deal with. Everybody wasn't happy, but the, the main thing y'all did as a focus was keeping school open and keeping kids and staff safe. And y'all did a remarkable job of that. And I really appreciate your support. I uh, know it wasn't always easy for any of us, but as a group, I could not have asked for a more supportive board for our uh, leadership team and for the administrators in our school and for the teachers. And the benefit of that, I, I'm really thinking that I'm, I'm assured that it's going to be marked sort of achievement that is better than we've seen in years. And I'm really looking forward to that. And thank you for what you did. Thank you, sir. Well, I, I agree with everything that everyone has, has said tonight. Uh, congratulations to all of our uh, athletic teams that finished up their season strong and are, are starting their season strong. Uh, currently, um, the uh, tennis team is doing well. The baseball teams are doing well. Um, so congratulations to all of our athletes as they continue to represent Harris County um, well outside of our community. Uh, I also want to take time to recognize uh, the significance of this time of month two years ago and where we were. Um, Mr. Couch sent out a very fitting uh, email to all of the staff and uh, teachers and everyone in the system earlier this week, reminding them where we were uh, two years ago around this time and what we were facing and Actually, we were actually a lot more prepared, thanks to the foresight of Dr. Finney and, and Mr. Couch and his team, his whole team of being prepared for what we had to deal with. No one's ever been through anything like that before. And, and it may come back again, mm. hopefully not, you know, but um, the, the words that you said in that email greatly expressed the, the feelings of this Board of Education. We cannot thank our teachers, our bus drivers, our administrators, our lunchroom staff who worked during the pandemic to make sure that children didn't go hungry. We ran our buses to communities and gave out lunches and breakfast for weeks on end 
to, to support our community who was hurting in that time because some of so many of our community were out of work. Um, you know, this, you know, people may say, can say what they want. Uh, we are a, a small part of this community, but this Harris County community is strong. Uh, when crisis comes and things need to be done, we all come together and we work as a team to get it done. And I cannot thank Mr. Couch and your whole team and everyone in our system for all of the hard work that they did. And hopefully we won't have to get another weekly update anymore. Let's hope. <laughs> Let's hope. Yes. All right. <clears throat> so with that being said, at this time, I will entertain a motion that we go into executive session to discuss or deliberate upon the appointment, employment, compensation, hiring, disciplinary action, or dismissal or periodic evaluation or rating of a public officer or employee, or to interview applicants for the position of superintendent, to discuss or vote to authorize negotiations to purchase, dispose of, or lease property, authorize ordering and appraisal related to the acquisition or disposal of real estate, enter into contract to purchase, dispose of, or lease property subject to approval in a subsequent public vote. Do I have a motion? Mr. Goodno, a second. Mr. Green, all in favor? We stand adjourned to executive session.
All right. So I will entertain a motion that we come out of executive session. Mr. Goodno, seconded by Ms. Oliver. All in favor? All right. Um, I will entertain a motion that we extend the superintendent's contract for another year with no changes to the uh, to the contract being needed. Motion by Mr. Lip, seconded by Mr. Proctor. All in favor? And then I will also entertain a motion that we accept the superintendent's recommendations um, for uh, the uh, jobs that were posted. I have a motion there. Mr. Green, second. Mr. Proctor, all in favor? Would there be no other business? We are adjourned. Okay. So I need to copy of that. So is Mr. Brock signed yet? No. Yeah, I gotta give it to him to sign.